Hello fellow Earthlings, today we are going to sit down and talk about The Martian, the latest movie directed by Ridley Scott and starring Matt Damon. Damon plays astronaut Mark Watney, who is, along with five of his fellow astronauts, on a manned mission to Mars known as Ares 3, because of course a mission to Mars would be called Ares, makes sense. And they're supposed to spend about a month there, but early on a nasty sandstorm kicks up and it apparently has some very high velocity winds that threaten to tip over their landing module and if that thing tips over, they can never launch it again, which means they're kind of going to be stuck there. Obviously they don't want that, so they hightail it out of there so they can evacuate and get back to Earth. And during the evac, Watney is hit by some debris and is presumed killed by his fellow astronauts, so they are forced to leave without him. But by some miracle, he survives and wakes up on Mars the next day, all alone. And he has to, first of all, find a way to contact NASA and let them know he is in fact still alive, and they need to send a rescue mission so he can get his ass off of Mars, and he needs to find a way to keep himself alive until they can do so. With the power of science! And that is essentially what this movie is about. It is surviving through the power of science. In his own words, Watney has to science the shit out of this. And he does. This was a very entertaining film. I know a lot of people have been talking about how good this movie is. If you're expecting to hear anything different from me, you can stop watching right now, because that's not going to happen. I loved this movie. It's got great suspense, great drama, a lot of good humor as well. I was surprised at just how funny this movie was. It's also a very optimistic movie, especially considering the situation that Watney finds himself in. Murphy's Law is in effect throughout this entire movie up until the very end. Anything that can go wrong will and does. It doesn't matter how many things start going right, eventually something is going to go wrong. Usually through no fault of Watney's at all, just shit happens. And of course he has moments of frustration here and there, who the hell wouldn't, but nevertheless he manages to remain optimistic throughout this entire stay on this desolate planet and it is amazing to watch, it really is. He maintains his positive outlook and he's constantly cracking jokes either with people back on Earth once he finds a way to contact them again, or just when he's recording his daily video diaries. Um, a lot of jokes about one of his fellow astronauts' taste in music, astronaut Lewis, who is played by Jessica Chastain, was apparently a big fan of disco. Somehow, even in the not-too-distant future, there are still disco fans. They just will not die. <laughs> And that leads to some very funny wisecracks from Watney. Like, no, no, I will not turn the beat around. I am incapable of turning the beat around. No, I refuse. <laughs> God, I love that. And of course, it is a very good thing that he maintains his optimism because that's really what ends up saving his life. That and science, but yeah, staying optimistic and saying, okay, I can either sit here and just be depressed and sad and frustrated and just wait for death to take me away, or I can find a way to figure this shit out. And that's what he does. And it is a great testament to not just what one person can accomplish on his own, because there's certainly a lot he has to do on his own, but also what a group of people can accomplish when they all come together. Because meanwhile, back on Earth, once they eventually figure out he is still alive, there's a lot of people that got to do a lot of shit working together to figure out a way to bring this guy home. And a lot of people end up teaming up that you wouldn't expect. There's a point where NASA actually has to team up with the Chinese space agency, which is something that you wouldn't see happening very often nowadays, I would expect, but they find a way to make it work. And it's kind of cool to watch. I really enjoyed just the sheer amount of ingenuity it takes to keep Watney alive and eventually bring him back to Earth. Yeah, yeah, spoiler alert, he makes it back to Earth, but you knew that. He has to find a way to grow his own food because, well, of course, they all brought food with them and that food is going to last a lot longer since it was originally a party of six and now it's just party of one, but still not going to last long enough. So he has to find a way to grow food on a planet that's one big, red, desolate wasteland. Fortunately, he is a botanist. And has the power of science! 
and he has to find a way to stay alive when shit inevitably hits the fan. And it does many, many times. And apparently the solution in most cases is duct tape. Whole lot of duct tape in this movie. Red Green would be proud. Now, as far as the science goes in this movie, from what I can tell, it is actually pretty accurate. Um, not 100% accurate. There are a few things here and there that are not quite right. And if you want to know what those are, well, you can probably just check Neil deGrasse Tyson's Twitter feed. I'm sure he's posted every single one of them. He does that. That's what he's good for. And it's possible that some of the mistakes are intentional in order to create drama because at some point, some movie magic has to kick in. But for the most part, they actually use real, honest-to-God science in this movie, and it is wonderful. And it is so refreshing to see a movie that knows how to do this. You know, you, you can use a movie with bullshit pseudoscience. There's nothing wrong with that. It can be done and still be entertaining. That's fine. One of my favorite movies of all time is Star Wars. That is not a scientifically accurate movie by any stretch. It really is not, but it's still fun to watch. But it is nice to see that someone understands you can use real science and still make a good movie and tell a great story. It can be done. Thank you. On a technical level, this movie looks fantastic. It is shot very well. The vast Martian landscapes look amazing, especially in 3D, and this was shot in native 3D. Um, it seems like I get to say that less and less often these days because so many people are turning to post-conversions. In fact, for this year's releases, I may have mentioned this before, but there are more post-conversions than there are native 3D movies, which I don't think has ever really happened before, not since 3D really started getting big with Avatar several years ago. But, you know, post-conversion technology has come a long way, and it can look very good, but nothing beats the real thing. Of course, if you're one of those people that can't see the 3D effect, then that won't matter to you, but I'm sure this looks just as good in 2D as well. You still get to see the beautiful Martian landscapes and all of the detail that goes into the Mars habitat and all the other equipment they have to use, and it's just very, very well done. As far as the cast goes, I really don't have any complaints. I thought they all did a fantastic job. Of course, a major chunk of this movie is the Matt Damon show, and thankfully he is up to the task and turns in a great performance. It's very hard not to like his character, partly because of his personality and his optimism, but also just out of sympathy for the poor bastard, because he has to endure so much. Especially as he approaches the end of his journey, you can really tell that this is starting to take a toll on him physically, because he loses a lot of weight, starts growing his beard out. He starts to resemble Tom Hanks in Castaway, actually. Uh, I don't know if that was intentional, but that's certainly the impression I got. Now, unlike Tom Hanks, who actually went through a lot of weight loss for that movie, I don't know if Matt Damon did the same, or if that was just, you know, a body double, or perhaps digital effects, or a combination of the two, but... That's certainly what it brought to mind. I really like Jeff Daniels in this movie, who plays the head honcho of NASA, and unlike Matt Damon's character, who is the perpetual optimist, he is more of the realist in this movie and tries to keep everyone focused on what they can and cannot accomplish. Even though you can tell he so desperately wants everything to work, he wants to be the optimist, but he can't, and you can see it's a real struggle for him. The other astronauts in this movie that were part of the Ares mission were also very good. Uh, Jessica Chastain plays the disco fan <laughs> in this movie and has to endure so much crap for Matt Damon's character because of it. Uh, she was great. Uh, Kate Mara plays one of the astronauts, and unlike her part in Fant Stick, she actually got to go into space this time. So, yeah, finally some love for Sue Storm. Uh, Michael Pena plays one of the astronauts as well, and is it me or is he in everything nowadays? I mean, between him and Kevin Hart, I think they cover about half of the major releases this year. Not that I'm complaining, he's a fine actor, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Kristen Wiig also does a good job in probably the only straight role I've ever seen her in. I'm sure it's not the only one she's ever done, but, you know, she's mainly known for comedy and, uh, doesn't really get to do much comedy in this one, but she did fine. Uh, Sean Bean was also very good in this, and no, he does not die. 
he actually gets to stay back on Earth, so he really can't die. And you also have Chiwetel Ejiofor. I don't really have much to say about him, except that it's a lot of fun to say Chiwetel Ejiofor. But seriously, he was good. And I don't think I really have anything else to say. Um, yeah, it's hard to come up with bad things to say about this movie. If I went back and watched it again and really tried to scrutinize it, maybe I could come up with more stuff, but... This was just really fucking good, and if you have not seen it for some reason, you need to. I can recommend this without any reservations whatsoever. Go see this movie. Get your ass to Mars. But try not to stay there as long as this guy did. And that's all I got to say about The Martian. So until next time, take care. For science!